Hi, my name is Mohammed Ashur, and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Aspire Food Group. Most of us can appreciate that at this very moment, our healthcare system is beginning to experience a tremendous amount of stress, while at the same time, our economy finds itself in the ICU. What we need are solutions that can rapidly scale our healthcare delivery system, while at the same time building a disease immune workforce that can immediately go back and start putting our economy back on its feet. The reason why it's been so difficult to generate solutions like the one I'm about to propose, and I contend there are so many more great solutions out there that are yet to be discovered, probably by you, and the reason why we have not done that is because we have not properly framed the problem. Right now, the challenge and the problem we're facing is that most of the solutions that are being proposed are addressing one problem at the expense of the other. So if you think of the fact that all of us now are self-isolating and quarantined, that is fantastic from the perspective of the health of the population because what it's doing is it's flattening the curve and limiting the infectious spread. However, this is happening at the expense of tanking the economy. And in fact, many of you who are self-isolated and quarantined at home have also been laid off, which means that in the pursuit of trying to help the population get better by doing the responsible thing and choosing to stay at home, you took a tremendous hit economically and personally. These are not viable solutions long term and they can't be sustained forever. If we want to get our economy back on its feet and bolster the health of our population at a magnified scale, what we need is a solution, a set of solutions that can simultaneously improve our population health and our economic prosperity, not pit the two against the other. With that out of the way, I would like to lay out a solution that fits this criteria. Now, there's a lot of assumptions that I make, there's a lot of models that underlie this, and I have consulted in the last 48 hours with some of the smartest people I know, ranging from immunologists, infectious diseases experts, public health experts, CEOs of publicly traded companies, presidents of universities across Canada, and I can tell you with a high degree of confidence that although this is not a perfect product and it's a work in progress, what I hope this is gonna demonstrate is a step in the right direction and the kind of thinking we need to begin to engage in that helps us try to address one problem and the other simultaneously. Now, for any solution to work, you must begin at a small scale with a pilot. So we're gonna begin with 250 healthy young adults. Why healthy young adults? Because the data so far shows that if you are between the age of 20 and 44, you are in a very, very good position to emerge with positive outcomes if you were to be infected with COVID-19. In other words, you have amongst the lowest possible risk of morbidity and mortality from the disease outside of people under the age of 19, but we can't pursue those for the sake of this, this solution. You're gonna bring these 250 people and you're gonna ask them to move into a hotel. Why a hotel? Because right now we are sitting on, in Canada, about 400,000 vacant hotel rooms that are perfectly functional assets that we are not leveraging. So by putting 250 of these hotel rooms to work, you're going to help in bolstering that portion of the economy. Now, 250 rooms is not gonna move the needle, but remember, this is just the pilot. We're just getting started. So you start with 250 rooms. Now, you're gonna say, well, who's gonna staff those hotel rooms because obviously you're gonna need people who work there, right? So amongst the 250 people you select are people who are from the hospitality and food service industry that can staff the hotel and all the other people who are gonna be residing within the hotel. So now what's the intervention? What you do is you engage these 250 people in a two week intensive training that allows them to be able by the end of two weeks to become certified medical responders capable of administering anything from basic all the way to advanced respiratory care for individuals who begin to suffer from deep challenges or complications from being infected with COVID-19. Now, these are not physicians. They are not people who went through four years of medical school, seven years of you know, post-medical training and residency and fellowship, but we don't need everybody to have that level of skill. We only need a small percentage of the population to have that skill set, and therefore, if and when individuals who really need advanced care need to be 
taken to a hospital, we now have capacity within hospitals to serve those especially severe cases. But for the vast majority of cases which can be treated at home or outside of the home, you now have a reserve of individuals who are perfectly capable of going to these nursing homes, traveling to people's homes directly, and delivering care. Now, you're going to say, well, but by asking these 250 people to go to people's homes and nursing homes once they completed their training, they're likely going to be infected. Yes, they are likely going to be infected. That's why we're starting with a young and healthy population. And that's why they are residing in a hotel where they are isolated from their families and loved ones. And that's why they are in a hotel with 249 other people capable of taking care of them should they get sick. The assumption here is that by after, if they get infected, they will be quarantined in their hotel room for a two week period until they recover. And after they recover, not only can they go back to serving the community and treating others and no longer being a risk of infecting others, but now they can actually move back to their home, vacate their hotel room, enabling someone else to come in and train and expand the pool of individuals that you are training in society. Now you do that pilot at a small scale and two weeks later what you have is a hotel that is back online you have 250 people that you've suddenly trained to be able to rapidly respond at a moment's notice to address the population health and you've put 250 people who are out of work and give gave them not only a real job but a job that is heroic and has the potential to save thousands upon thousands of lives once you prove this successful this is when it really starts to get exciting and scales up. The next cohort can expand to 10,000 people. And why? Because we have virtual medicine and online education modules that can enable us to engage in rapid education at an exponential scale. The next cohort, 100,000 people, 500,000 people. And within a short number of months, you will have not only put a significant percentage of the economy back its, on its feet, but you will have immunized a considerable portion of the healthy young population of Canada, put them back into the workforce, and gave them the tools and training and ability to be able to now at scale deliver healthcare interventions should the crisis really, really, really exponentially grow, at which point we will be prepared because we now not only have thousands of physicians and ICU specialists, but now tens if not hundreds of thousands of responders that are capable of, of, of deploying to people's homes and to outpatient clinics to delivering care. And it doesn't stop there. Once we get to a place where we have covered the ratio of our population because now we have more than enough service providers and individuals capable of providing medical help to our Canadian population, now you can take these heroic responders and actually send them to other countries, which will now begin to start seeing their own healthcare systems begin to collapse and where our heroic intervention can now be exported as a, as a much needed intervention to help many countries around the world. Now, this is just one idea. It has many assumptions built into it. It will take some time to implement. It will require a massive undertaking of logistics, a lot of input, a lot of ideas, a lot of execution, a lot of field work, a lot of on the ground work, and that can't be done at all in isolation. So if you either qualify to potentially be enlisted to have a job like the one I described, or if you would like to be part of the group of people who deploy the solution at scale, you know something about how to, how to, how to, how to, how to provide online education. You can take ICU care and respiratory care and break it down to a curriculum that can be deployed and can be trained in two weeks. If you have experience in any number of areas which will be required to make this happen, or if you simply have ways by which you can make this idea better or stress test it, what I ask you to do is to please click on the description of this video, click on the form that's there, put your first name, last name, email address, and the specific way you wish to get involved, and let's get involved, let's try to do something soon and quickly, because this is an undertaking that requires every single one of us to tap into the very best of what we have learned, and the very best of our values, and the very best of ourselves in this moment of great need. And again, I recognize this is just one idea, we need many, many more ideas. And what I hope, if nothing else, this video has done, is it demonstrates to you that you have it within yourself, and as long as you activate within yourself 
this incredible spirit, and not just within yourself, but within your family, within your community, within your colleagues, this incredible human spirit to address massive challenges and to confront them with your education, your resources, your networks, your experience, and everything you have learned, we can produce exponential solutions to an exponential problem and not only recover from it, but emerge far better from it morally, economically, and from a healthcare perspective. So I really appreciate your time. I will not take it personally if you think this idea is terrible or you have many, many problems with it. Like I said, I will be recording a longer video where I walk into in greater detail all of the nuances, all of the assumptions, a lot of the facts from conversations I've had with many health experts over the last few days. But this is a start and I hope if nothing else, this ignites in you a spirit of wanting to come up with a far better idea because you can. Thank you so much and let's do this.